In this final video on rose petals, I want to give you, or I want to show you a quick way we can graph them um, by utilizing some of the, the observations and patterns we noticed uh, in the previous two videos. So we're graphing r equals 7 cosine of 3 theta, and here I want to formalize a little bit more what rose petal graphs always look like in terms of their form. So rose petal graphs will always have the form r equals a cosine b theta or r equals a sine of b theta. And what we noticed was that if b is even, then the number of petals in this rose, rose graph is going to equal 2b. If b is odd, and the number of petals is just equal to b. Uh, and a is equal to the petal length. Now, the difference between a sine rose petal and a cosine rose petal is something I leave to you to sort of observe, uh, just to observe and see if you can figure out what, what the, the, uh, the function, the trig function, actually uh, what it, how that actually affects the, the battle the battle graph so let me show you how we use these uh, to come up with a, a nice way to graph these so the number of petals in this case well that's our B and B is B is odd so there's gonna be three petals and the petal length is going to be seven now we can kind of ignore this here now because we we don't need this anymore necessarily. Um, but you know what, for, for we're here, we might as well put it down. The amplitude of this as a rectangular in a rectangular form would be 7, right? And uh, our period would be 2 pi divided by 3. And again, we're going to use degrees in this section, <clears throat> 120 degrees. So I know how many petals there are. I know the petal length. What I don't know is where is that first petal? Oh, and the other thing, the other thing we need to notice is that the petals are evenly spaced around the origin. And that is 360 degrees, right? They're, they're evenly spaced 360 degrees divided by the number of petals. Now, the, so the only thing we really need to, to make graphing this really quick is we need to know where the first petal occurs. After that, we can just add the appropriate number of degrees to get to the next one over and over, and then we'll have our graph. So in order to get your first petal, this is what you do. You graph only as much as you need in the, in the rectangular form to get the first petal. So if my period is 120 degrees, you, know, you can put it anywhere you'd like, I guess. Just put it here. Cut that into fourths. And the amplitude is 7, so let's just say 2, 4, 6, 8. Let's just say that's 7. And let's call that negative 7. Now this is a cosine graph, so I know it's going to start here. And you don't really even need to do this whole picture like I just did. What you just need to notice is that the peaks, right, the maxes and mins on the in the rectangular form correspond to petals. So what degree, at what degree does our first petal occur, right? 
actually at zero degrees. Right? There's a pedal at zero degrees. So we know where our first pedal is. It's at zero degrees. So I'm facing zero degrees. And my pedal length is seven. So I walk out seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my first pedal tip. And I can make my first pedal. Now to get the other pedals, all I need to do is use the fact that they are evenly spaced. So 360 degrees divided by the three pedals I know are going to be here gives me a, a spacing of 120 degrees. So my first pedal, obviously they're all going to have the same they're all going to have the same length. But my first pedal occurs at zero degrees. And I already plotted that one. The next one is just going to occur at zero degrees. Well, they're evenly spaced. I'm going to add how much they're evenly spaced by, which is 120 degrees. And then I'm going to do it again until all my petals are traced. So the next one is going to be at 720 degrees. So I rotate 120 degrees, which brings me, I like to do this sometimes to make it easier. Right here, so I face 120 and I walk out 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's my next pedal. And I add 120 to that, I get 240. And 240 would be, let's see, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240. Facing this direction, walking out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we are. And then I add 120 to that, and I get 360 degrees, but now notice I'm really just back here. So I'm, at that point, I'm just redrawing the same pedal. And here we have it, three pedals for this rose graph. Uh, I, use, I use the fact that my B value tells me how many pedals there are. The A value tells me the length. I know they're evenly spaced. And all I need to do is use this to find the first pedal. I do enough of this graph to find out where that first pedal is. That tells you where to start, and then you add how much they're spaced by. And you've gotten your beautiful rose petal graph. Now, here, I, I don't usually give dating advice, but here's some, this is my additional dating advice. So this is, this is like a bonus. This is a bonus aspect of this video. You go up to a, your girlfriend or boyfriend, with this graph, graph something like 5, so graph r equals 5 cosine of e theta, e theta, graph it on the interval 0 less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to 20 pi, you're going to get a beautiful picture, and they're going to love you for it. Remember that's E, that's the number E. So I tell you, you graph this, you show them, you show them that picture, it's a beautiful picture. They're going to give you a nice big kiss. All right, and that closes off our, our, oops, our analysis of rose petal graphs.